When people think of creatine supplements, they often think of this. But in this video, I want to explain why I use creatine to extend my healthy years on planet Earth. So let's dive into the data. So there's a concept called sarcopenia, which overall it describes a concept that our muscles weaken as we age. So our muscle strength, it builds up in early life, it peaks, and then gradually it weakens. Luckily though, there are interventions, including nutrition and exercise training, that seem to slow or reverse these processes. Therefore, to prevent or delay sarcopenia, the aim is to maximize muscle in young adulthood, maintain that muscle in middle age, and then minimize that loss in older age. So a great diet and regular exercise is paramount to maximizing that initial peak and then slowing down that decline. And this is where creatine comes in. So for those of you who are new to creatine, it's a naturally occurring non-protein amino acid compound found primarily in red meat and seafood. So it's already found in the diet, which is important when we start talking about safety. Now the majority of creatine in humans is found in skeletal muscle, with small amounts also found in the brain and testes. And about two-thirds of the creatine found in muscle, it's stored as phosphocreatine. And when our muscles exercise, they burn through the energy stores called ATP. So when the ATP is burned up, the phosphocreatine is there to help rebuild the ATP. This helps make sure that ATP is available, particularly during sprint-type exercises. So that's the theory as to how creatine can help improve muscle strength. So what does the evidence show? Well, luckily for us, we've got a 2015 systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials that compare creatine supplementation to placebo, and they were looking at strength performance of lower limbs measured in exercises lasting less than three minutes. And this is really important for aging, because as we age, our leg muscles in particular, they weaken, and that predisposes us to falling. So anything we can do to boost our leg strength is a good thing. So this review included 60 studies, and they found that creatine supplementation is effective in lower limb strength performance for exercise with a duration of less than 3 minutes, and importantly, this is independent of population characteristics or training protocols. So this is awesome news. We've got human clinical trials that are placebo controlled, showing that we can boost muscle strength by using creatine. And when it comes to extending our healthy years on planet Earth, this is the holy grail. And for those of you who follow my channel, this is why there's a lot of trials going on combining exercise with NAD precursor molecules such as NR because we're hoping that when these molecules are combined with exercise, they will give further strength benefits. So we've already got a molecule in creatine that does this. It means that we're maximizing our muscle strength peak and then maintaining that peak for as long as possible. And by doing so, we're giving ourselves the best chance at making sure that we can do the activities that we want to as we age. But that creatine systematic review, it was done in 2015, and there's been a few interesting trials since then that I do want to go through. So in June 2019, there was a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial that wanted to see if we can improve bone strength by using creatine. So they took 200 postmenopausal women with half receiving creatine monohydrate and the other half placebo for two years. Unfortunately, creatine supplementation, it didn't improve bone health in older postmenopausal women, nor did it improve lean muscle strength or function in this population. And the trial goes on to conclude this refutes the long-lasting notion that dietary supplementation alone can improve bone and muscle strength in the long run. And this is a really key point. Supplementation alone isn't going to help us. It needs to be paired with exercise. So a great diet and exercise, you just can't beat it. The other trials I want to go through is where they gave creatine to older people. Because creatine trials looking at this older population, they are lacking. So this 2016 trial was again a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trial, and it ran for 14 weeks. All people undertook a supervised exercise training program and were either given whey protein supplements or whey protein and creatine supplements. And overall, creatine and protein supplementation, it didn't seem to further improve the strength of these people when compared to just giving protein. So this is a really interesting finding. In these older people, when they were given protein, or if they were given protein and creatine, that group, it didn't seem to give any further benefit than just compared to the protein group alone. 
Whereas if we compare these results to a similar trial in 2014, creatine supplementation did seem to improve muscle function. So do creatine supplements give muscle benefits to older people? Well looking at this data I'm not sure. But even so, if I was 70 or 80 years old, I would still take creatine supplements, and here's why. There is evidence to suggest that creatine supplements may reduce muscle damage and enhance muscle recovery from intense exercise. Creatine users also experience less muscle cramping, muscle tightness, strains or injuries compared to those that don't take creatine. And since creatine gets into the mitochondria, which are the powerhouses of the cell, Creatine helps reduce reactive oxygen species production and can therefore act as an antioxidant. And if those muscle benefits aren't enough, there is some evidence to suggest that it can help with brain health. So once again, we've got a systematic review of randomized controlled trials, and this review was published in 2018. It included six studies that involved 281 individuals. And overall, there was a suggestion that creatine may improve short-term memory and intelligence of healthy individuals, but its effect on other cognitive domains remains unclear. But like any supplement that we're considering taking, we need to make sure that it's safe. So over 1,000 creatine studies have been conducted and billions of servings of creatine have been ingested. Plus, creatine is already found in our diet. So data from long-term studies in healthy and diseased people, from infants to elderly, at relatively high dosages for up to five years, have consistently shown that creatine supplementation poses no adverse health risks. But in the media, you do hear of risks with creatine. But numerous well-controlled clinical trials show that creatine supplementation, it doesn't increase the risk of muscle injuries, dehydration, muscle cramping, and gastrointestinal upset, nor has the literature provided any support that creatine worsens kidney function or has long-term detrimental effects. So on that point, one of the biggest concerns that people have around creatine is the effect on the kidneys. But long-term, high-dose ingestion of creatine, so up to 30 grams a day for five years, in patient populations has not been associated with an increased risk of kidney dysfunction. So that is really encouraging for the safety of creatine. But like anything that you hear in the media or on YouTube, always talk with your doctor first before starting a new supplement. So with that out the way, what is the best dose of creatine? So about 1-2% to of our muscle creatine is degraded into creatinine, and that's excreted in the urine. Therefore, the body needs to replenish about 1-3 to three grams of creatine per day to maintain normal creatine stores, depending on muscle mass. And since creatine is primarily found in muscle, Vegetarians have been reported to have lower levels of creatine stores. So in a normal diet that contains around 1 to 2 grams a day of creatine, muscle creatine stores are at 60 to 80% saturated. Therefore, dietary supplements of creatine, they serve to increase muscle creatine by around 20 to 40%. So there's a couple of ways to do this. You can quickly boost your muscle creatine stores by taking 5 grams of creatine four times a day for five to seven days. And once you've done this, then you can generally maintain your stores by having around five grams a day. But depending upon your goals, this loading phase of creatine, it might not be necessary. You can get away with just having five grams of creatine a day and slowly building up your muscle creatine stores. So personally for me, I take five grams of creatine a day and the form I take is creatine monohydrate. And that's because it's the most commonly studied form of creatine. So there are claims that different forms of creatine are degraded to lesser degrees. But clinical evidence haven't demonstrated that different forms of creatine, such as creatine citrate, have a greater creatine retention than creatine monohydrate. So the International Society of Sports Nutrition has concluded that creatine monohydrate is the most effective nutritional supplement currently available to athletes in terms of increasing high-intensity exercise and lean muscle mass during training. So that is the final point that I do want to cover in this video. Creatine supplements, they do seem to help with high-intensity training. They don't seem to help the performance of endurance trainers. But even though creatine doesn't help in endurance performance, it does help with muscle recovery.